Right, OK, good afternoon. My name is Brian Gerrish, and I'm going to talk to you largely about common purpose, which you've now seen on earlier slides and to do with Gordon Brown. But I'm also going to try and open your eyes to something wider than common purpose. It's basically how this country is being destroyed. And we're not at the stage anymore where we've got a problem with political parties. We are not at a stage where if we get rid of Mr. Brown, as has been quite rightly suggested, we can replace him with Mr. Cameron. Because if we do that, we're going to end up continuing what's happening in this country. If we replace him with Mr. Clegg, we're going to continue what's happening in this country. So what we've got to do is replace our MPs with decent, honest, moral people. And I'm going to be very, very measured and very careful here because the people who actually voted these idiots into power is a very small percentage of the electorate. So what we are going to do is get the majority of the electorate to vote for honest, decent people. Some of them might call themselves Blue Sky Party, some of them might call themselves Green, some of them might have no name, they might just be, I nearly said a person, they might be a real human being. So I'm going to leave you to decide who you vote for, but what I'm going to say to you, if you continue to play the game and vote for Conservatives, Lib Dems and Labour, this country is going to continue the slide to slavery. That's a fact. Right. The state of the nation is on screen, because here's the column, the newspaper. We've started to print what other people won't print. We're now on our third injunction. And those injunctions are coming in because we have been printing the truth, not about politicians, or grubby businessmen, but because we've been starting to print the truth about children. Now I know that there are some young children in this audience, and I'm going to say gently to mums and dads, I'm going to be talking about some very serious stuff. So it's your decision. But I'll also say to you that when I gave a talk in Birmingham Central Mosque, which was now about two years ago, and I also said the same thing, the Muslims in the mosque said to me, the children stay because we want our children to understand exactly what is happening. So I leave it to you, but I am going to talk about some rather disturbing subjects. Now, we heard a lot about the Constitution, and I think really we need a just society. Isn't that what it's about? We need a just society. How many of you would agree with that? <laughs> if I said that we need to adjust society, we need a just society, how many would you, of you would agree with that statement? I'm being deliberately deceitful. Because what am I talking about? Am I talking about a just society? Or am I talking about adjusting society? Both. Because what I'm doing with you is neuro-linguistic programming. I'm saying one thing which your conscious mind says, I want a just society. But your subconscious mind is talking about adjusting society. And that neuro-linguistic programming is now an epidemic through the newspapers, the media, a very nasty organisation called Common Purpose, but through a lot of other vehicles, courses. 
And that neuro-linguistic programming, reframing of people, is beginning to change how they think and how they act. So that when you see a se or you hear of a senior police constable saying he can't let officers ride a bike because it's dangerous, that police constable believes what he's telling you. So every time your brain starts to say that's ridiculous, that's crazy, that's madness, I want you to start thinking just maybe that person is not normal. And I'm going to take you on a little journey through this country because under the surface of this country is a very nasty cancer. It's been put in alongside the corrupt bankers and the bent politicians. But this cancer is now undermining the way our society functions. Now, I hope that all of you have got a copy of the UK column, because in it, on four pages, six, seven, eight, and nine, I've attempted to do a guide to what's happening, and I've done it in diagrams, because they're better than words. So I hope you've got a copy of the paper. Whether you choose to look at it while I'm talking, maybe. But if you haven't got one, after the talks have finished, can I encourage you to get one? And we do need your donations. If you will buy, if you will subscribe, if you'll donate, we are getting the message out. On a good month, 100,000 copies. On an average month, 40, 45,000 copies. They're going into Parliament. I can tell you this paper is read by the Labour Cabinet. That is not a joke. I can assure you it is. And they don't like it. So, this is not a very good slide because I know it's a bit faint, but I stumbled across this in Plymouth. It's a huge hoarding. I don't know how long it is, 40 feet by 15 foot high. It's the Prince's Trust. Have you all heard of that? It's a wonderful charity that does wonderful things for young people. And I believe that Prince Charles is involved in it. So it must be good, mustn't it? But I got interested in this poster. On the left-hand side, in case you can't see, is a young man. And then the words are, God, Father Christmas, some young people don't even believe in themselves. Now, as I drove past that, I thought, that's a very interesting poster. And then I got a bit further down the road, and suddenly my brain said, neuro-linguistic programming. Because there are other meanings in that sentence. One is that God is equated to Father Christmas. Some of you might believe that. I think you should think about it very carefully. But the message being put out to people reading that poster, or going into their minds subliminally, is that God is like Father Christmas. Well, never mind God and Father Christmas, which the young person doesn't believe in, they don't even believe in themselves. So there's about three messages going around. When you get a daily paper, let's take the Daily Mail, because what a disgusting paper it is. <laughs> Normally, Across the top, you now have cheap banner adverts. Nothing to do with the seriousness of the situation in the country. Cheap adverts for DVDs. You will then have a very serious article, which could be on the money, supply, or another issue. And usually, alongside it, you will have a slightly clad young lady. Now, the way this works is that when your mind looks at the front page, it initially takes in the serious stuff, but then another part of your brain switches over to the young lady. Well, mine does. Do you know that heterosexuality is now being questioned? We are now seeing papers where they're questioning whether it is normal to be a heterosexual. That's interesting, isn't it? So, if you're a normal heterosexual male, your mind goes from the serious article to the young lady, 
and back again and back again. And what's being done is a trick on your mind. You're not concentrating on the real issue. Your mind is being flicked around. And this is neuro-linguistic programming, and it's being done to you by newspapers. So we need to be very, very discerning in how this country is being attacked, because it is to do with manipulating your minds, and it doesn't have to be common purpose that is doing it. It is now being pushed through all sorts of courses. So the next time you read something, go back to it, revisit it, and see if you can find some other meanings. There was a new poster that came up following this one, and I tried to get a picture, but unfortunately couldn't, couldn't get it downloaded. But there's plenty of hoardings. Some of you might have seen one against the smokers, and it showed a picture of a side of a bus stop surrounded by dog ends, and then it said, are you a dirty chucker? Now you're laughing, but the meaning is vicious, because what's happening is that smokers are being made outlaws. When you see smokers, and I don't smoke, but when you see them huddled in the cold by a doorway, they are being made non-people. And this is very dangerous, and it was done by the Nazis. They started the initial no-smoking programs. So what you are seeing, be very careful of. That's a blank slide there. Now, what's happening around the country? We can go quickly. Has anybody got any problems that we're in a police state at the moment? Does anybody still think we're in a democracy? Okay, so we can go through this quite quickly, but we've got the cameras. I've shown this to several people, but up here, this is a policeman with a CCTV camera strapped to his head. They trialled this in Devonport in Plymouth. So you bump in, well, preferably don't bump into him, you meet this man on the street and he's filming you. You are a criminal. We've talked about this. This was a Christian centre, the cross has gone and a wavy line is there. And I say quite calmly, that's a serpent. You might not believe it. And I saw lots of these coming up actually, and I've seen quite a few round here. This is a pub, a derelict pub. They're all closing. And the reason the pubs are closing is not to look after your livers, but because pubs are places that people go and talk to each other and swap information. And the government doesn't want that. The government doesn't want that, so it lies to you. It says it's very concerned about teenage boozing. So the supermarkets start to sell it dirt cheap. Your publican can't afford to buy in his beer. So a community, a centre of community is closed down. Are we happy with that one over there? Fingerprinting. It's being done. There are schools now where the children were fingerprinted in order to get their school dinners. They make it a game for the children. It's very serious because the children are then going on a database and we know that schools are starting to teach children about eugenics. Do you know that? They're running dance and drama classes on the theme of eugenics. Eugenics is selective breeding and now it's being introduced to children. One of the themes is, how would you feel sitting next to a clone? So when you start to see these experimentation things relaxed, and you see a mouse with an ear on its back, has anybody seen that picture? This is not a game, it is very serious. And I hate this, because I'm always the person that takes you right down to the depths. But we've got to go down to the depths before the end of the day, but I promise to bring you back up again. So fingerprints. Guantanamo Bay. Now what's the President of the United States called? Because I just can't remember. <laughs> yeah, what did Mr Obama say? Did he say he was going to close the camp? Did he? Or did he say... I think he said it was his intention to close it. So when he doesn't, presumably he's got a let out clause. But the BBC is interesting because they say some people think waterboarding is torture. Do you all know what waterboarding is? 
It's torture, isn't it? But the BBC, they're obviously a little uncertain because that's what I heard on the news the other night. Some people think it's torture. Not it is torture. Well, Mr Blair and Mr Brown, aided and abetted by Mr Cameron and Mr Clegg, have sent people to that camp to be tortured. And as I say, we should be ashamed of ourselves. We've got problems with youth on the street. It's created problem. It's created. We've got churches being demolished. We've got homes being repossessed. We've got brutal police appearing. Now, if I understand it correctly, we have some police officers in the hall, and thank you very much for coming along. But we have some questions about your training. I have some questions about them, which we'll come on to later, because I believe the police are being put through training, which is neuro-linguistic programming, which is making them unsure about how to police, and that could make some of them very dangerous. What about this one? This has got us running around silly at the moment, isn't it? Recycling. Is the rubbish in the right bin? Is the bin in the right position? Have we put it out on the right day of the week, but it's changing next week? My wife goes loopy with this. And she's supposed to, because that's what it's there for. It's distraction. It's breaking you down. It's making you frustrated. And this is all coming from the government. Has something else popped up there? Oh, we've got a mast here. Tetra, they're springing up all over the place, but nobody wants to tell us what they're there for. Young lady unconscious through drink. You see a few of those around. Fishing fleet destroyed. I think we're just about there. So basically, if I can move on. Oh dear, what's that? It's emerging, isn't it? It's a beast emerging through some very foggy situations in society. But no matter what we do, we go and join our little political party, but the beast still seems to keep coming. And the reason the beast keeps coming is because we are not seeing it in the right form. The threat is not the European Union over there, it is what is happening as a result of the European Union in this country. Do you know what this one is? If you read the paper, you will do. This is £350,000 worth of artwork at the Buntsfield Oil Depot. Do you remember where there was the big fire? And they've now put up a an artwork to celebrate the gateway to the business park. I believe this is satanic. I'm not going to go into detail, but this is somebody mocking destruction. They're taking the mickey out of you, and they're certainly taking the mickey out of you if you have been kind enough, we have been kind enough, to pay £350,000 of our taxes for it. Child stealing by the state. When I started a newspaper, with a lot of help from you and other people, I thought we were going to be talking about politics. And then I got calls and we got information about fraud and corruption and missing money. Not about a few thousand pounds, but millions of pounds. And the stories, they had a template. It didn't matter whether it was Plymouth or Sheffield or Leeds or Bristol or Birmingham or Manchester or Glasgow. It was the same undercurrent of a cartel of criminal activity. And what we learnt very quickly was all three of the major parties were deeply involved. And then when we thought, well, that can't get much worse, we started to get stories about children. And we got phone calls, usually from ladies, but not always. And they told us incredible stories about their children being taken away from them. A row with a neighbour, then the social services called, then the next minute they were saying that I was doing something. One lady, a French lady, found 
that the husband was abusing the two young girls, 1619. She tried to do something to stop what was happening inside the home, but she couldn't, so eventually she went to social services. Social services were therefore involved. She went through the process. She had a solicitor, and then she said, it was as though my solicitor was talking to social services behind my back. And then it was as though I was the victim. I was doing something. And then they wanted to take my daughter away. And then they said, well, you need a psychiatric assessment because you're very stressed. And if you have that assessment done, then don't worry because we can fix it all and make it better and you can see your child. So she had the assessment and, oh dear, she's got a problem. We think that to see your child, you probably need to go on Prozac. And she said, I was in a nightmare. Everyone I went to, they were in on it. Social services, the local authority, the police, my barrister. Now this story came from this lady, and I'll give you the full, full flow of the story. But we've got others, and they follow a template. And we've seen the documentation. We've listened to recordings of telephone calls. And what we are seeing is a pattern of people's children being deliberately taken away. And I'll tell you what's happening to them next. They're going into a system of abuse. Either just ill treatment with carers, or they're going to a nastier type of abuse. And when people have the evidence to prove it is going on, you suddenly find, and I hope the police in the room are listening, that the police don't help the people reporting it, they intimidate them. And in South Wales, where I gave a talk simply on this subject, three witnesses came up on the stage with me and told how they were threatened by the local police to keep their mouths shut. If you were going to destroy a nation, it would be a very good wheeze to start destroying families. Because if you can't protect your children, if I can't protect my children, there's not a lot left. There is not a lot left worth fighting for. And what we are seeing across the country on a massive scale is children being taken away. The French lady, married to an Englishman, fought. She fought her way out of depression. She eventually got another high court case. And to her delight, the judge found in her favour and gave her custody of the two children and permission to take the girls back to France. She'd been living in France for about six months when there was a knock on the door and French social services appeared. And they said, we, 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 we've just come to check on the girls, but we're going to ask you to take them into the local town and you've got to have an audience with the judge, but it's all to see the girls are okay. And the mother said to me, I know, I knew what was going to happen. So she took the girls, she had to, and the moment they stepped over the threshold into the judge's quarters, they were snatched from her, physically snatched from her. She was told she mustn't attempt to follow them. She now knows that they were then held in a children's home for period of weeks, and then the French social services calmly handed them back to English social services, who calmly handed them back to the father, who by that time was working with other men to abuse children. And if you're sitting there thinking about your friend, if we're going to move forward and fight what's going on, you've got to deal with your friend. You've all got one. It goes like this. I've just been a bit nasty about the police and social services, but you're thinking, I've got a friend, Rita, and she works for social services, and she's a very nice lady. Brian Gerrish has been very horrible about politicians, but my friend, Sir Peter Bodily Watt, he is a wonderful, upstanding man. Now, we've got to be discerning, because I'm not saying to you every policeman is bad, far from it. But what we've got to do is we've got to learn where we've got to look 
to root the bad people out. Children, absolutely fundamental. The paper now has three injunctions to stop us telling the truth about children who have been unlawfully taken from their parents. And Plymouth City Council is so frightened of us that they put two injunctions to stop us reporting on a couple we've never reported on. Why are they so frightened? Is it going to go? Here's a judge, and he's talking about um, making the family courts open. Can you read it at the back? Or shall I read it? Right, this is from Sir Mark Potter, Britain's most senior family judge and president of the High Court Family D Division. He told the Times that the judiciary had been split about whether to open up the family courts and that there was not a clear single view. However, he welcomed a move to greater openness by the judiciary, delivering public judgments subject to an, an anonymity. So what he's saying is, we're not going to let you see what goes on in the courts, but we're going to be really open about telling you what the decisions are. But inside the courts, social services are producing few false reports. There's perjury being committed. There's barristers lying. There are judges clearly finding in favour of paedophiles. How can they do it? because senior judges have made it a rule that you can't see inside the courts. So we've got a pretty serious situation. We've got ladies and men, and mums and dads and partners screaming with evidence what's happening to their children and we can't get the facts out because we get gagged and you can't get into the courts. Without putting a hand up, for the people in the room who are experiencing this, am I telling the truth? Okay. We need to deal with these people. If this is the standard of our judiciary, and we have our judiciary working on the Constitution, and whether the EU is legal or not for us, we're not going to get anywhere, are we? We are seeing widespread corruption. We are seeing corrupt judges, corrupt barristers, corrupt solicitors, corrupt law firms. And so it's no wonder to me that when we take a court, a case to the High Court to try and get us out of, out of the European Union, it gets squashed. It's bound to get squashed because these people are bent. And we've got to start exposing them. We don't need violence. We just need to call them what they are, criminals. I'm not, of course, suggesting that Sir Mark Potter is one of those. But I'd like to ask him why he isn't dealing with the factual evidence which is showing just what is happening in the family courts. Will he come and see us and look at the evidence we've got? That's my challenge. All sorts of groups are trying things. And here's um, Fathers for Justice. Who's the lady? Is it Harriet Holman? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I don't really care. She's another politician that they've handcuffed because they're so fed up that the politicians won't act. So let's have a look at these politicians. These are the ones who are destroying your lives. And yet their expenses, we don't want to make those open. Was there a debate in the House of Lords over the 900 billion being paid to the banks? Was there? You don't seem very sure. I don't think there was. I think Mr. Gordon Brown with his cronies behind closed doors voted the money out. But here's two of them, happily not married, both on a nice big fat MP salary, both making decisions. This is Balls, isn't it? Balls by name. And he's making decisions about families. He's a Bilderberger, I believe. I believe he travelled, I believe, allegedly. A couple of allegedly's in there, but I think I'm pretty accurate. He travelled to a Bilderberger meeting. 
on public money, but he hasn't yet declared it properly. Here he is. Do you know where I got this wonderful slide from? I got it from his um, sort of world faith site. If you haven't been there, go and see it. It's horrible. <laughs> and just have a look at this man. His eyes, basically. If you look at this man's eyes, they are totally cold. He does not have a conscience. He doesn't ma mind how many soldiers have died. He doesn't matter, mind about the children. He, he's not a human being, I don't think. But he was running the country, and then when he'd got it to a state of decay, he handed it over to Gordon Brown. We've got to do something about these people. We don't need violence. We just need to tell them that they don't have any more power. We're not interested in reading about Tony Blair. He's horrible. Did you vote for this man? So why is he there? Well, we haven't challenged it yet, have we? It's time we challenge. It's time every MP got a visit. Pardon? <laughs> the, important, the important thing is to remember that he was helped into power by the communists. And if you look at the Labour Party and who's got a background in Trotskyism, Marxism, you will find there's a nest of them and now they're doing mm, interesting things with the bank. Or am I just suspicious? What about this chap? You know, but we've got to deal with them. It's time we took these people down. He's a Bilderberger. So why is this man having meetings with the powerful elite in the world He's supposed to be there serving us, so we need to remove him, but we need to do it in the right way. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah? It's not often we get the chance to actually look at these people. What a pair of idiots. They are traitors because they know perfectly well what's happening with the money supply and what Brown is doing because the Labour Party, the Conservative Party and the Lib Dems are all taking policy advice from an organisation called Demos. We've proved that in the last edition of the column. And that means, strangely, a left-wing party and a right-wing party and a somewhere party, that's the Lib Dems, are all taking advice from a Marxist-based think tank that was set up to help Tony Blair, who you've just booed. So if Demos is driving the policy of the three parties, we can't bother anymore with voting for any of these people or dealing with our local MP if he's one of them. If he's one of them, he is one of them, and we need to ditch him or her. We need to pull these people down. We need to make idiots out of them. We need to challenge them why they aren't doing their job. <laughs> I'm disappointed that we couldn't provide food and drink for you. Why does that come into my head? Bananas. <laughs> Every time I look at this man, I see something not human, and of course he was photographed with a banana, do you remember that? You might not have seen it. He's a Marxist, we know all about him, we know his family, he's a Marxist. And he's playing around with policy which is destroying this country. If you met him in your local pub, would you want to talk to him? Don't think so. I've spoilt it. It's great fun booing, but we've got to remove them. And to remove them, we've got to bring them down, and that means exposing them. This man is disgusting. He is now making policy decision which are effect is affecting all of our lives. He hasn't even been elected into a proper position. He's just doing it. He's going off eating caviar on big yachts with very dodgy people. 
and at the moment we are accepting it. And I haven't yet heard real opposition to these people from any of the other parties. Very diplomatic, you know who I'm talking about. So let's start pulling these people down. Because whilst he's interested in his grubby little activities, this is what's going on. And if you want to know why the troops are in Afghanistan and in Iraq, it is to keep them out of the country, to kill them, to maim them, so that we do not have troops to defend this country when they move in the European police. If you, if you doubt what I am saying, you will shortly be learning through us and other means that military bases are being closed for British troops in this country, refurbished, ready for NATO troops. Why do you want NATO troops in Britain? Because when the violence starts on the street, which is what the government is planning next, you use foreign troops because there's no risk they will fraternise with the demonstrators. It is not a game. This works all the time. The country's falling apart. You can see it, you know it, that's why you're here. Well done. But the slide into chaos, there's something behind it. Now if we analyse the country, here's a police state. The individual's there to serve the state. The state is governed by an elite. Is that what you're looking at? I think so. The state is the law. There's no such thing as a fair trial. People can be in prison without trial. This is happening on a daily basis in Britain. I get calls from people and they say to me, you need to be very careful. And I say, why? And they say, well, because somebody's going to shoot you or you'll disappear. And I say, why? I live in Britain. It's a democracy. Because the person who says that to me must know already it's not a democracy, it's a police state. When I die or disappear, it will be a big rubber stamp that everything I've told you is true. That's why, presumably, they don't do it, because I am annoying some people. <laughs> propaganda for the state, it is pouring out of the government, sheer lies and propaganda, and the BBC is doing it because the BBC is part of the machinery. The media, the newspapers, look at who controls them. A handful of people, it doesn't matter whether you read the Telegraph, or the Express, or the Mirror, it doesn't matter, the same individuals control them. The state maintains and funds an extensive intelligence and security system. Do you see they're recruiting more MI5 operatives? Have you seen that? They're recruiting ladies. It's in the paper. They've put up adverts in gyms in London because they want fit, cunning ladies. They need them because there's some pretty poor MI5 operatives in this hall at the moment. <laughs> Children are brainwashed. Children are being brainwashed in schools. The European stuff is in there. Don't take any notice of your mum and dad. Make sure you have a European food day. They're taught disgusting things about sex. They're shortly to be told that being heterosexual is not normal. Believe me, that is coming. And they're being asked to consider whether they'd be happy to be sat next to a clone. Children, they are going to brainwash completely. Who's heard of ARC, Absolute Return for Kids? Academy schools, have you heard of them? You need to find out about them because when you take a look at them, they don't have many windows. They're going to be wired up with so much Wi-Fi that the children are go going to be on neat microwave the whole school day from the age of 3 to 18. They're going to have police and social services as an integral part of the school. And the people who are going to run the school are big international businesses industrial military people like British Aerospace, 
and we've got the documentation and it says that although they've got to have a normal curriculum when they start, if they want to change that curriculum at any time they can do. You are about to watch children taken by the state as in China and brainwashed. So this is it. We have something very nasty inside the country. It's pulling us apart. You've got to see it to be able to stop it. And I'm delighted at the number of you who are now reacting. We get more and more and more calls from people saying, I see it, I see it. This has happened. I found this document. I found this document. This is what happened at work. I'm being sent on a course. So keep going because the key to stopping it, which is what this meeting is about, is to explain it to other people. If the 40 million voters know that they're being brainwashed and attacked, they can deal with it. Now in the paper, this is page six, down the right hand side is a list of organisations which I've called change agents. Now some of them you will know, the Tavistock Institute, the Roundtree Foundation, the Claw Foundation, Common Purpose, IDEA, the Local Government Association. Do you know these organisations? Some of them. You need to read this, you need to get onto the computer and research them yourself, because when you know who funds these organisations, oh, money. Somebody funds them. Who funds them? The bankers. The bankers fund these people. But we've already heard that the bankers are all corrupt criminals. So when we see that Deutsche Bank, a German bank, a very big one, is a key funder of common purpose, we should be interested. We should be interested when we see JP Morgan funding a children's charity. Goldman Sachs. The moment you see the bankers connected with these change agents, you know that you're on the trail of something nasty. These are the organisations that form policy and that is then injected into our society. You think it's coming through the government, it isn't. These change agents give the government the policy and they then enact it. Demos being a classic. The Tavistock Institute. Very nasty organisation in my opinion, but it helped create the National Health Service and social services. So we should be happy, apart from the people who know that children and adults are having body parts stolen from them. And if you don't believe that's going on, I can tell you that there are some people in the audience who will tell you how they never got the body of their 12-year-old daughter back because too much of it was missing. And they have never achieved justice because everywhere they've gone it's been covered up by politicians, by senior policemen, by coroners, by members of the Welsh Assembly, I think. So these people need watching very closely. Now this is the opposite page. So down here we'd have the change agents, and they inject policy into this. And I've called it the third sector, and I'm going to take that apart in a minute, but I want you to see the page. So that's page seven. Right, we're at the bottom of the heap. We are at the bottom of the dung pile. And this is how we think it works. We've got nice people called parish councillors. They try and do their best for our community. They're unpaid, but the government keeps heaping more and more regulations on them. Any parish councillors in the room? Do you know what I'm talking about? Declare your assets and interests. Here is some recommendations as to how you should run your community. We've got county and district councillors, any of those? Pardon? Do we have any district or county councillors? Is that a no? That's none, I can't see any. My goodness, so you know how locally you're represented. Where are they? <laughs> MPs, any MPs? Well, Parliament, we've heard all about that. House of Lords, what a lovely organisation that is. 
We've got Peter Mandelson. He'll be preening himself in there. And we should have somebody else somewhere. We've got the Queen. Now, we don't know about the Queen. <laughs> Can I be a little bit of a smart-ass and say, I've met the Queen, and uh, she doesn't like, look like you. Right, so, we don't know about the Queen, but we just get the impression that, sorry, this side has all been pushed away. It's not working properly. These people are not serving us, they've been pushed to one side. And this is what's been put in its place. Here's all the change agents. Okay, I'm not going to read them all, you can do that for yourself. And what they do is inject policy into this new area of society which is called the third sector, sometimes called the third way. Have you heard the politicians talking about it? They've all dropped it in, so's the Americans, so's Obama. So this is the new sector, the new powerhouse of the new society, the new post-democratic society, the third sector. And what's in it in UK over 1,300 government departments, check it for yourself, employing over 500,000 people. What did they do? How did we manage to run the country in the 1940s or 50s? These people have been created, usually on good salaries, to control every aspect of our life, whether we can drop litter, how we teach our children, what we can say to people, how we behave, what forms we fill in, how much rubbish is in the dustbin. You feel it, it's oppressive. And these are the people creating it. And they're helped, because most of you think charities are nice things run by nice old ladies who collect money and then they help people. Well, that was true, and for some charities it's still true, but really what's happening is that they have created a vast army of political charities. And in this country, there are over 170,000 charities consuming billions of pounds, but you don't know about them or what they do. You need to find out. So when somebody comes around collecting, you want to know who's really funding them, because a lot of the charities are funded by government. Here's the influence. It comes into the third sector. The third sector help push it into Parliament. And once it's there, all the poo drops on us. So we are spending time trying to convince these people, but the monster is growing through the, com through the country, through the third sector. And that's why it seems to you, no matter what you do, this thing advances. You can feel it, it's like a big octopus. And what we've got to do is get in amongst this lot and break it up. And I'm delighted to say it's started to happen. <laughs> right, got to go quickly because I'm watching Roger. He can be very tough sometimes. The Fabians, anybody a member of the Fabian Society? Thank you for putting your hand up, that's very good. The Fabians, to most people, are a debating society and they do debate all sorts of things, but behind the facade is a very nasty organisation. Its, its emblem is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's got another one which is of men hammering the world into a different shape. And their effective technique is that they're going to change us, but they're going to do it so slowly we won't know it's happening. So, if I could jump back to Tony Blair, who you know and love, we'd be interested that he was a chairman of the Fabian Society. So don't think that the Fabians are some innocent little party in this, they're very serious. Here's Demos, and Demos here is putting policy, it says that absolute power doesn't corrupt. According to Demos, it's we don't have power causes the problem. So they're turning what we know to be truth on its head. 
And this is common purpose. How many of you now know something about it? Okay, I got it right because I didn't want to talk too much detail. I wanted to show you something different. Common purpose is a change agent. It's a political cult. It recruits people, trains them to recruit other people, and they go on and train others. But what it is doing very cleverly is changing and reframing their views. And I can talk to you about people saying strange things. I can talk about people becoming mentally unwell. I can talk about all sorts of things. 30-odd thousand common purpose people now in the middle of that third sector. Here she is. This is my favourite lady, Julia Middleton, the chief executive. And she was giving a talk, and I don't know whether you noticed the eyes, but there's something special. Who is she? She's now advising National Health Service on running hospitals. She's advising the military. She's advising schools. She's advising MPs. She's advising the government. She's everywhere. But who is she? Well, she's married to a, a man who's involved with the Trinity Mirror Group. She was involved with Demos, a Marxist organisation, and she is creating the new leaders. I think something is very dangerous here because she talks about us empowering ourselves, except when we ask what public money is doing being spent on this. And then she says we're right-wing extremists. So she can do it, but if I ask why, we're the problem makers. They have been collecting names of people inquiring about them over the last year and putting them on a spreadsheet. We know this because we have a copy of the spreadsheet. And I can tell you that at the moment there is a battle going on because Common Purpose has coerced members of the public sector and a police force and somebody within the prison service to release names and addresses and telephone numbers of people inquiring about Common Purpose. They have coerced civil servants into breaking the Data Protection Act. And now they're lying about it, and I have the letter that proves they're lying. This organisation and this lady are very dangerous. Basically, this is an article that's appeared in a magazine called Third Sector, but you want to read it because it's talking about the breach of Data Protection Act. Now, good old Julia Middleton gets around because she's a new leader. She pays herself about £80,000 of the money that comes into her charity. But don't worry, because most of the money comes from the public sector anyway. Oh, that's us. So she was a bit bored one day. So with a friend, they decided to create the Media Standards Trust because news matters. And this trust has a board of trustees made up of leaders of integrity, selected from civil society and the media, and they're going to reflect our diverse society. And surprise, surprise, the deputy chair is Julia Middleton, Sir David Bell, Sir, Sir David Bell, chairman of the Financial Times Group. Who have we got? Waterstones. King's Fund, that's a pretty interesting one. The BBC, Robert Peston. You know him, the man who's always got the news? Um, Baroness Helena Kennedy QC, Bishop of Wakefield. These are all normal people. And do you know what they're doing? They're going to make sure that the media is fair and open and honest. No, honestly, read it, read it. Do you know where the office is based? It's based in the middle of Common Purpose's office. This is communism. Is it going to work? Come on, work for me. Now, Julia Middleton is so worried about UK and our media and the world that she's helped set up another, another trust. It's called Alphanar, which I understand means lighthouse in Arabic. Do you like the logo? What is it? Thank you. If you can see the logos, you are more than halfway to seeing the organisation. 
So here is Alphanar, and what they're going to do is they're going to help change Arab society. Now I can tell you that Common Purpose is busting a gut at the moment to get in amongst the Muslim community. And they've had a huge grant, a number of them from the government, to run leadership courses for Muslims and Muslim children. The reason they say they want to get in amongst the Muslim community is because they want to help stop extremism. I hope the special branch and MI5 are paying attention to this because they could learn a few things. So Common Purpose is being paid by the government to get in amongst the Muslims. And at the moment they're not doing very well because we are talking to the Muslims on a daily basis about what Common Purpose is wanting to do. But why does Common Purpose want to get in amongst the Muslims? Any answers? It's very simple. Compared to us, who've allowed our families and values to be wrecked, they still have very tight family units where mum and dad are important and they pay attention to the local, uh, I was going to say preacher, imam. So Common Purpose has got a real problem because it's about breaking down society and it can't break the Muslims down because it can't get amongst them. The same thing with the Arabs, they have a totally different culture but we're sending in Julia Middleton to scramble them. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Uh, I can't even remember why I put it. Oh yes, I could. These are people who are training sort of... Oh no, sorry, I know what this is, sorry. This is um, a bit of text about the trustees in that Alphanar Trust. And I did it deliberately because most of it's pure bull. But here we've got a Mr, can't read it, Hamilton or something. Here's Demos. Well, this is Julia Middleton as well. Demos, sorry, in here. Who have we got here? We've got UNESCO. Um, down here, we're coming down, we've got the World Bank. And I think you'll find we've got some colleges. We've got the Saudi Hollandi Bank. So we've got a mixture of people who say they're involved in charities but they've got big banks backing them and common purpose, and this is socialist dogma. This is dangerous. Now the police, well, here's my challenge to you for the police, because this little group say that they are training the police. And we've got a Phil Hardy, he's a master in neuro-linguistic programming. Down here, Associate of the Leadership Academy for Policing, the National Centre for Applied Learning Technologies, oh, and the Scottish Executive. So why are we giving the police neuro-linguistic courses and do the policeman understand that if you're given neuro-linguistic training, it can seriously damage your mental health? Have we noticed the number of people becoming depressed? Do we know about the suicides in Bridge End. How many suicides now? Is it up to 30 now? It's very high. It was 27 and it's crept up. Why are these people committing suicide? 31. We should be really worried about this. Well, if you look and see what courses these people have been doing as youngsters, you'll find it's full of neuro-linguistic stuff. Common Purpose is very active in South Wales. Here's another trainer. Um, licensed in the use of psychometric and personality instruments. Uh, he's involved in crisis management, counter-terrorist programs. Blimey. The police training using neuro-linguistic stuff is so good that they can murder people on tube stations. Sorry, did I say something wrong? And so bent is the government that you have a closed court where the coroner directs the verdict to the jury. If you want to know why these weird things are happening, start to look at who is training who. I've warned you about common purpose, but there's many others, and we should be asking why anybody is being subjected to NLP techniques without a health warning.
Who have we got here? Some more trainers, European Mentoring and Coaching Council. What's that? We need to ask. We need some letters asking what the hell this is, because it's something not very nice. And this Alan, he's looking at the paradigm change needed for police reform. I don't think the police need a paradigm change. I think they need basically going back to basics. But the reason they won't go back to basics is because at senior level, this policy is being pushed through. Okay, I've finished there. If you look on the website, CP Exposed, in about a week's time, a lot more information will go up. A lot more documents, more names, all factual. To start countering what's happening, we have to start pulling apart the third sector and we have to start making our MPs and councillors accountable for the actions. I'll leave it there. Thank you.